Hey guys, welcome back to this YouTube channel. Um, just before we get going, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, today's going to be a little bit of an educational video when it comes to liquidity. I'm also going to show you how I use these concepts to catch a couple of trades that I sent out to our signals group. And I'm basically going to break down to you how um, we basically use um, retail concepts as liquidity concepts and you may want to reconsider everything you've learned after you've seen this video and kind of the accuracy of how this works. Um, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet but I'm also going to give away some points that are of some value to you guys. Um, there's a lot of myths around surrounding retail that every supply and demand has to hold every support and resistance has to hold and obviously if you've traded long enough you know this is not the truth i kind of want to show you the liquidity aspect of it and what we look at and how it ties in to the retail side of things and yes obviously i'm a retail trader but i'm going to show you where the retail strategies that are so popularly taught fail and how we use those stops as entries. Now if you guys have not uh, already watched the last couple recaps I posted, um, you might want to do so. It'll tie in with this video more and maybe make more sense. But in this particular video I want to give a, a lot more away. So uh, right off the bat I want to mention to you guys that we had a daily close that's bullish, daily close that's bullish, um, the expectation is a daily close that's bullish. Um, now, there is a couple of places that I'm willing to buy from. The first one is a really simple liquidity. It's the previous day's low. Everybody knows this. The next one I'm going to show you is a little more advanced. And uh, you're definitely going to want to stay to the end. I'm going to give away some cool stuff this time. Um... You could almost say this is like a demand um, and it's like basically the last main pullback before we broke structure here. That's the retail aspect. Um, in our concept um, with the uh, range liquidity system, which is what we trade, I would look at this as we took out previous days low. Uh, we took them out with what you guys would call momentum candle. I know this is inducement that's going to get taken out. This is inducement that's going to get taken out. This is inducement it's going to get taken out. Um, highs that get formed like this are targets. They are not supply zones that you want to trade off of. And I'm going to show you why. Um, all right. So again, previous day low and our last pullback that's also a demand zone. Now what makes this significant is this pullback is the last main pullback before the daily high got taken out. Um, the next thing I want you to really look at is we get these vector candles out. Um, if you look at the interaction between the ranges, so these wicks, um, all these little ranges are kind of balanced. And then here price kind of dipped down. Um, price really has no reason to come down here. All these ranges are perfectly balanced. All these orders are filled. Um, here, this is out of session timing. So that is, this candle's closed at 11 o'clock my time. That's two hours past, uh, that's an hour past New York lunch basically. So volume's low. Um, when you see something like this, only an institution can create a wick like that. Um, and what it signifies is there was not enough sellers in the market at this point for them to facilitate a buy order large enough to take out this high. Um, so what the institutions will do is they will sell themselves the order so they can buy it. Um, what happens with these particular points is they always come back and they want to take out the point where this transaction happened because it'll always be a retail demand level or a retail support and resistance level. Um, the way the algo positions these, they're very, very strategically placed. Um, 
So everybody in their right mind probably thought this is the supply you want to sell from. Um, it's not. What happens is you'll get one reaction and then price will blow through it. Same thing that happened here. This was an inducement high. You got one reaction, price pulled back, blew through it. Inducement high here, one pullback, left level of liquidity. You took this liquidity out, uh, out and ultimately price just blows through this high. And the same thing happens over and over. Um, so let's look at the lower time frame side of things here. Um, there was a news this day and what we can pretty much do is just go down to where the news came out. Um, now the first trade may not make sense to you guys right away, but if you stay till the end of the video, um, it will make sense. Um, so this is the five minute, this is a news release with what I just showed you guys on the one hour. What do you think the chances of this high holding is? Um, next to none. This is not the last supply that broke structure. It is not a strong supply. Um, this is not inducement as retail teaches it. The inducement is actually this whole push. It's gonna induce people into cells. Um, we know that we wanna see um, either this level or this level to react. Now there's enough liquidity being distributed during news. Um, the volatility is high enough. I can basically use one minute or the seconds to find um, respect of liquidity pools. So um, the first trade may seem a little more advanced to you guys uh, and it may not be something you'll take, um, but it fits the plan. So um, this is my first clue that this higher time frame liquidity, also a demand level that we took out is holding. You can see all price is wicking below and the keyword being wicking, there are no body closes here. Um, the next thing that happens, we react with vector candles or momentum candles. You can see here, price perfectly rebalances. Um, so we fill all the imbalance in simple terms. And basically what I'm looking at now as this is a protected liquidity pool, possibly, I don't know that yet. Price taps and rejects again. Um, now what I wanna note here is again, when we tapped into this liquidity pool, we once again um, get vector candles out or momentum candles, or you could call them imbalance candles, whatever, whatever suits your boat. Um, I call them vector candles. And now ultimately what I'm looking at is the next set of basically the next area that's a liquidity pool to me that's being protected. Um, I can execute this. Um, this to me basically is enough to buy. I don't need a break of structure. I think we executed on this bullish candle. So this was the first trade I sent to the signals group. Um, and this is my point of invalidation. You always want to cover a bit below for, you know, the market sweeping equals or whatever. Main point here is it's a liquidity pool being protected, liquidity pool being protected. Um, this is inducement. This is building liquidity to take out a liquidity level. And if you do trade supply and demand, never trade off something that looks like this. And also basically had a straight shot down. That is the definition of an inducement high. Um, so from retail perspective, our nearest liquidity is to take out this supply zone. Um, so that's the thought process on this. Um, so this was our first trade. Um, a lot of people probably sold on this. Um, this is a supply. This is a chalk or break of structure or whatever. A lot of people probably sold here. Um, it's actually a buy. Now, 
So the market could do one of two things here. Um, we could get another reaction. So if we go back to our theory of what I explained to you guys here, the last pullback before the daily break, last pullback, last pullback before the daily break, um, point of invalidation would be up here. I expect a reaction here. Um, this could possibly be a short term sell. Um, so I took two more trades in here. One was a good one. One was a stupid one that actually broke my rules, but I'm going to show it to you guys anyway, because I thought it was a good area to hedge a short term sell. Um, that wasn't the case. Um, so now we come back and we reassess. So you can kind of see we have a sell order here. Um, this is the pullback. This is the break. So ultimately, this is the last place our orders transferred. So I want to see what candle takes this out. And ultimately, that is my lit zone. So to me, this would be the pullback before the break. So this would be our order transfer zone, OTZ. This would be our lit, which is the liquidity induced trap. Um, Thought I had a different one for this, but okay, whatever. So this is lit, liquidity induced trap. Um, what I want you guys to really notice here is where the liquidity induced trap is sitting. So um, supply and demand, you just broke a supply. This is the last demand that took out structure. So now um, a lot of guys are going to flip their bias and they're going to buy off this level, which is, again, um, not what you want to do. We actually want to run this demand level and we want to tap into our liquidity induced trap. Now, if we look at the range to range interaction, again, um, ranges are interacting, pulling back, kind of balancing. Here you got a big push, another pullback. Um, all these ranges are balanced. Price doesn't need to necessarily come down there. Um, so this is kind of what made my one trade stupid. But I'll show it to you guys anyway. But you do have a pull of orders here that's lining up under our liquidity induced trap that's lining up with taking out the demand level because this demand is a flip zone as you've been taught. So in this particular case, it's liquidity. Um, so we just wait for price to react. By the way, once this reaction happens, um, the next thing is that makes that a one hour target um, so same thing here, um, we tapped into the liquidity induced trap, three bear, uh, three bullish out, I can take this. Um, so this is the next trade I set, sent out to the signals group. Now I'm not chintzy on my stops, I cover comfortably. Um, I have travel room on this one so I can target the daily high. Um, so this was the next trade I sent out to the signal group and ultimately three bullish candles out of a liquidity induced trap. So going back to our protected liquidity pools, protected, protected. My expectation is this pool is now protected with the point of invalidation being here. So as long as that holds true, there is one other area below here that could react, which is why I sold, but, um, all these ranges are balanced, so it kind of made it a poor sell. But I'm going to show it to you anyway and why I took it. Um, so price kind of did this. Um, so here, so I kind of made a mistake here. Um, I had like a brain fart or something. So at this point, my invalidation point's here. At this point, my invalidation point is here. For some reason, I don't know if I got caught up in one minute candles or what happened. For a quick second, I thought my invalidation point was here. And I actually thought this was a proper place to hedge. 
So I took this and ultimately I was just going to break even on it and see if it wants to continue down. Now I don't know if it wants to resweep this area or take this liquidity out. But ultimately, um, when I went back and looked, this uh, broke my plan. The point of invalidation has to get taken out for me to hedge, which it didn't. Again, I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, now this was a silly trade, and the risk reward actually wasn't even there on this one. So, not sure what happened there, but long story short, I end up losing that trade. And if we just continue the order flow, liquidity is being respected, liquidity is being respected. So, all these liquidity pools below are being respected. Um, this is telling me there's enough buy orders being built. Um, I can hold this to the daily high. Um, ultimately, uh, I eventually just break even and leave this trade. Um, so this doesn't hit TP till the next day, but same difference anyhow. And you guys can kind of see how the order flow interacted this following day. So same thing here. We, uh, your OTZ's up here, your lit is here. Uh, point of invalidation will be down here at the swing point. You have the exact same scenario. You tapped into this pool of liquidity. Uh, price taps into it once, taps into it twice. Um, the third one taps in again, but ultimately this is a signal that the liquidity pool is protected. Um, obviously these are unscheduled news, so this news push here is when this last one finally hit TP. So it did, uh, it took a while, but um, same concept played out. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, definitely uh, subscribe, definitely follow us for more content. I'll be breaking more of these down. And uh, hopefully this is providing value for some of you guys. Um, yeah, have a great day, guys. I'll see you in the next breakdown.